Nick Legalbo, and today I will be presenting an Ed Talk on the concept of paradigm shift, why the leader's why drives everything. So a little bit about me before I jump into this concept. Um, I work at a high school in Chicago, Illinois called Lane Tech High School, and I've been very fortunate to uh, work as an English teacher, uh, basketball coach. I've now been the head basketball coach of the program for the past 12 years. Uh, and now I'm, I am in year three of being our school's athletic director. Um, before that, I actually attended the school as a student. So I've spent nearly 20 years of my life uh, just completely immersed in uh, this school and, and working to uh, be a part of and then now articulate a vision. So I've done a lot of reading and research and study on this concept obviously of leadership, but also this idea of uh, beginning with your why. So I want to discuss that today and then some things that uh, really are a byproduct of, of starting with why. So to begin, I think it's important that we as leaders understand that, you know, there's a domino effect. I think that ultimately, uh, once we understand our why, other things are able to happen. I think if we begin leading and we don't have the why in place, we are, you know, on a journey without a map. We are, you know, wandering without that North Star to guide us. And ultimately, you know, you can really, without a, a roadmap, without a GPS, if you're on a journey, to, to give you a metaphor here, if you're on a journey without a, a roadmap, you're going to get lost and you're going to lose those with you along the way. So uh, I think it's really important that you understand why comes first. So the leader's why drives the big picture, the roadmap, as we just discussed, which is your vision. And then I think ultimately the vision drives your day-to-day, -day, which is your mission. And that mission and how that all feels really, uh, at least the way I define it, is, is the culture, which is a living and breathing thing. Um, again, your day-to-day -day interactions, living your mission and culture are dependent on articulating that vision and living that mission and creating authentic relationships. So then that domino effect continues. Authentic relationships are dependent on trust, truth, shared experiences, and shared beliefs, which all stem from creating a shared buy-in to the vision and mission. So again, ultimately, any organization, business, school, etc., is going to have, you know, different offices, classroom teams, things that make up the, the organization. And that is all driven by the leader's why. So again, starting there, let's continue to look at all this. Um, before we, we talk about how this all, you know, you know, starting with why and that concept, I think, you know, if, if step one is your why, really that, that precursor to your why is, well, what is your purpose, right? And uh, in 15 years of teaching, English and coaching basketball, something that I've done is had my students and players reflect on the word purpose, obviously what they believe their purpose is. But before we even get there, we talk about what does the word purpose mean? And in 15 years of journaling and discussing, uh, the major takeaway and the definition we've all come up with over the years is, is just simply purpose is using your passions to serve. Say that again. Purpose is using your passions to serve. So starting there, um, I've been able to define what I believe my purpose is. Uh, and I've really, you know, just a quick time out here, I think having your students, players, those you lead, discuss their, their individual purpose and how that correlates to being bought into the vision uh, of the organization you're leading is a very powerful conversation to have. And again, want to create shared buy-in. Wow, what better way to do that than to have all those you lead discuss why they want to be a part of something that's bigger than them and how their purpose impacts the organization. So again, the leader's why is directly correlated to the leader understanding and believing in his or her purpose. So now continuing on, and again, the computer's a little slow here. Come on, next slide. There we go. Skipped a few. Okay. So again, your purpose informs your why. Here's just a small example. Uh, I kind of took the 
steps, the domino effect, if you will, that I just laid out in slide one, and I just, I'm making it kind of a personal example here. So example, what starting with why looks like? For me, taking that definition of using your passions to serve for the word purpose, the way I define my purpose is simply, I will use my passion for my faith, my family, leadership, mentorship, knowledge, and the game of basketball to serve and to impact lives. Note, purpose informs your why and your why drives your vision. My personal vision statement is I will be a warrior of the light. Uh, and I will discuss that a little bit more at the end of the presentation. My mission statement, again, how I'm going to live day to day and how I'm going to act. I will stand and fight for what is right. I will impact the world through service and in sharing my passions, and I will be a lifelong learner. So now how do I take what I believe my purpose is as, as a human being and my vision and mission statement for myself and now apply that to, for me, uh, the Lane Tech basketball program, which is the organization that I get to have the, have the genuine privilege to lead. So here's the application, right? I take my purpose, and now I have to articulate a vision, right, for Lane Tech basketball. So I take my why, and now I articulate that to the organization. We will use the game of basketball to positively impact lives by doing things the lane way. Quickly, just to show you what that looks like, if I can pull this up real quick. The lane way is something that I've defined and what that means. I think when you have key words or things that you define for your organization, you have to put it into a definition. You have to make it real and tangible. So that's a snapshot of what the lane way means for our school. Back to now the presentation. Okay. So mission statement. We will work to compete at our highest level of competitive greatness every day on the basketball court, in the classroom, and in life with no excuses, and we will do it together as a family. If you really unpack that, there's a lot there, right? Um, we're going to compete at our highest level of competitive greatness, right? We are going to do that on the basketball court, in the classroom, and in life. This isn't just about basketball. It's bigger than basketball. It's about shaping and molding the lives of young men through the game of basketball. We will do this with no excuses. We understand life's not fair. No one said it would be fair. You have to find a way. We will do it together as a family. And we talk about what that means a lot. So then articulating that vision, living your mission, feeling your culture, creating buy-in, I then articulate that through uh, the pillars of our program, the identity of our program, and communication, uh, the way we communicate. If we have time at the end, I know I have, I have about 20 minutes, I'm already on eight minutes here, I will show you exact samples of what that looks like. But for now, I want to just continue on, because this isn't about my why, it's about, you know, let's discuss how this all goes together. So. This is a, a, an example I took from, from a very powerful leader in our world today, Simon Sinek, and he has a book that is actually called Start With Why. Uh, I've read the book and obviously uh, listened to his TED Talks and just some very powerful takeaways uh, for, for all of us in leadership. So, you know, the idea that, you know, Simon Sinek discusses this idea of the golden circle and, and really what the paradigm shift is in today's society. Too many organizations and leaders begin with what they're going to do instead of why they do it. You know, the key is not to focus on the product, but the process. I know that's so cliche, but it's very true. Got to be present. Got to focus on the process of every day. And that is what's going to create a product. Um, it's, it's driven by why, not what. So Sinek discusses this concept in his book, Start With Why. Um, some great examples he uses, like, you know, the organization IKEA, which is thriving, right? Their vision discusses nothing about the furniture they create. It doesn't discuss the what at all. Their vision statement is to make everyday living better for the many people. I remember hearing that and just thinking that was profound. And I actually went into a quick study of big businesses that are thriving and what their vision statements are. And I was so like blown away at how the real successful organizations, their why is really about their why. Their vision is about their why. It's not about what. It's not about the 
the product that they're selling. It's about, you know, why they do what they do. And then the, the what the product is, is really just comes from living that why. You know, he talks about the idea of Martin Luther King Jr. He had an I have a dream speech, not I have a plan speech. You know, the idea that the dream is the vision that he wanted to articulate and he lived that vision. He didn't come out here and say, here's what, 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 you know, here's what we need to do, what we need to do. He talked about the dream and the vision and created a followership. Um, and profound leaders, that's what they do. I think leaders have their why drive how and what. So again, a great book to read. I would definitely encourage all of us to take a look at that. Uh, going on to the next slide. And again, computer, not jumping right in. It will take a second here. There we go. So real relationships, real people. As we discussed, you know, your, your why is driven your why drives your vision. Your vision then becomes about living your mission and creating a culture, how that mission feels. So in, in all that, you need to have authentic relationships. So once the leader establishes the why, everything is built on that. And I think authenticity is, is just paramount in leadership. We've all heard the importance of being true to oneself and being authentic. Uh, to quote Shakespeare, this above all, to thine own self be true. But in being true to yourself, you're able to build authentic relationships, right? So I remember some things to consider. I remember hearing Doug Collins, who obviously he was an amazing basketball player in his own right, um, played on that Olympic team that, that you know, lost the gold to, to Russia in that controversial 1976 Olympics, or 72 rather. Um, but also, I mean, he's just been a profound leader in, in, in the world and in the game of basketball. And I remember hearing him speak at a clinic. And he introduced this question to us. He said, what comes first for you, trust or truth? And he didn't really give us an answer there. He let us ponder that. And that's something I've thought about for a long time. But I think, you know, for me, what I kind of concluded, for me, for me, trust is going to come first. For me as a leader, if I'm building relationships, I'm going to trust uh, until you give me a reason not to trust. For others, you know, truth might come first. You're going to need truth spoken to you. You're going to need those truths to build trust uh, because you don't want to be burned. And I think as a leader, you need to know which one comes first for you. Um, and then, you know, how do you articulate truth? How do you establish trust? For me, when I think about my leadership style and I think about who I am as a person, um, something that I do in teaching for 15 years every single day without fail um, I am in the hallway before the bell rings and I shake every one of my students' hands and I look them in the eye and I ask them how they're doing. Every day for 15 years, that is something that I do. And I think that that establishes uh, consistency. That shows, for, some, for me, I want my, my people, the people that I lead, I want them to know that I care about them and that their lives and their success and their futures matter to me. I think that's at the forefront of, of my leadership style is that caring, uh, you know, is one of my core values. And, and I need the people that I lead to know that I care about them first and foremost as people and then as students and players in our program. So I think for me, I establish that trust by being there every day, shaking hands and being consistent. And I, I articulate the truths of the vision of our program, again, by showing up every day, uh, and there's a million different ways to articulate truths for us. You know, it's obviously in, in having weekly meetings and, and again, being consistent. It's about um, having handouts. It's about, and again, really living the, 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 the truths you want to see in your vision. It's about living them every day. Uh, and if we have time, we'll talk more about that. I think creating experiences for organization uh, to have real positive experiences matter. Having team bonding outings Um you know, and, and again, obviously, if, if you're a coach and this is about basketball, going through season, season having wins and losses is, is freely. I mean, we think about creating experiences, the highs and lows of any basketball season are going to give you ample opportunity to create those authentic experiences. Practice every day, uh, having players that are having a, a hard time buying into their role, having players that may be struggling, having uh, players that have had a really great game and then into, go into a game where they struggle and, and how you deal with all that. Holy cow. I think coaching is, is, it's just, it's very easy to, to create those authentic uh, shared experiences. So we just have to be mindful that every day you're going to have ample opportunity 
to impact lives and, and it's what we do with those opportunities that matter. Um, do the people on your bus share your vision, right? So John Gordon, you know, the energy bus, great book. But, but for me, that, that whole concept of the bus started years ago. My first year working Duke basketball camp, I remember Coach K, who's a big mentor of mine. Uh, I've studied him since I was a little kid. I went to the same grammar school as Coach K here in Chicago. So since I was a little kid, uh, I've been just enamored with Coach K and worked his camp for 12 years. And, and something he talks to his campers about, you know, he got about five to 600 kids sitting in Cameron Indoor Stadium. And he always shares this story about getting on the right bus. And it's something his mother shared with him uh, when he was starting high school about you know, she asked him, Michael, make sure, you know, you get on the right bus tomorrow before his first day of school. And being a, you know, he says just a, a you know, a young teenage boy. He said, well, yeah, Ma, I know what bus to get on, et cetera. And she said, no, Michael, you know, you need to understand tomorrow you're going to be getting on some buses of people that are going to take you different places. And you need to make sure they're the right ones. And then she said, and further, one day you're going to have the keys to your own bus. And you need to make sure that you let the right people on your bus. Because uh, you're going to be taking them places, and they need to to you know share the vision. They need to go where you want to go, and I thought that was just such a profound piece of advice. And you know, in leadership, you know, not only are you going to have to, you know, fight to get people on your bus that share your vision, but there's going to be times where maybe people don't share your vision and they're not on the right bus, and and sometimes you have to let people off your bus to make sure that, you know the journey goes where it needs to go because there are going to be people that will derail your bus at times. So we'll talk about that here in a second. And again, just to steal a quote from Don Yeager, you will never outperform your inner circle. So I think you as a leader didn't know who's going to be in your inner circle. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to share the right ideas and concepts and, and your whys need to be similar uh, for your inner circle to really be effective. Having an attitude of gratitude, I think in leadership, you know, very simply, there's going to be days where things don't go your way and your vision, mission, culture is going to be challenged. General Martin Dempsey, you know, one of the most profound leaders in our world, literally voted one of the best leaders in our world by Time Magazine. He talked about this idea that leaders give up the right to have a bad day. You know, you're going to have things that happen to you as a leader and you're going to have to go out and you're going to have to say some things that you know, sometimes they're going to hurt those you lead and, and sometimes contradict things. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be honest and forthright and you have to stand up for what is right. And you can't let that impact your emotions and you can't have a bad day as a leader, you know. And again, you have to fight for your culture every day at Doc Riversism. Uh, in these times, keep in perspective, we must be in touch with our why and feel that appreciation. So I started studying this idea, you know, and, and, and truthfully, it's scientifically proven that gratitude and stress cannot coexist. So when you're feeling gratitude, when you're feeling appreciation for everything, for, for life itself, for the opportunity to get out of bed and be healthy and have the day to attack, as Ralph Waldo Emerson says, give me health in a day and I'll make the kings of the world jealous. When you feel that, that real appreciation uh, for those you lead, for what you lead, for what you've built, and, and again, being thankful for the opportunities, for the experiences, but also for the challenges. Because, you know, uh, Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacles the Way, your challenges are going to help you get better. What you go through makes you stronger. There's no book that's ever been written where the character gets up in the morning and has a perfect day and the book ends. Because obstacles and challenges are what make us better and what make us grow and what make this journey worth living. So, in combating those obstacles, you have to have a thankful list. Write down things you're grateful for. Reflect on things you're grateful for. Physically, just smiling releases endorphins and helps you get past that negative emotion. So just force the smile. Even if it's not real, it will become real. Focus on what you get to do, not what you have to do. That's a great John Gordonism. I get to get up. <laughs> I have two young children with a third on the way, and they're up at the crack of dawn. I get to get up at 5.30 in the morning with my children and get them breakfast and get my day going. I get to do that. I am privileged and honored to do that. It's not something I have to do. It's something I get to do. Um, you have to pour into your team. Handwritten notes, emails, social media posts, group outings. Be creative in the way you 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 connect with those you lead. Um, Quick-ism. Uh, quick thoughts, something that in college we did this thing. One day we were sitting around the, the dorm room. We were all bored and 
not knowing what to do. And we started playing this game, raise the roof on self-esteem. It was very silly, but we just went around the room and said one thing that we appreciated about each other. And that's something I've stolen. And I use that with my teams now. Every year in the locker room, when, when we hit the dog days of the season, we sit in the locker room and we just go around the room. And I tell each player one thing that I appreciate about them. And they all have to go around the room and say one thing they appreciate about their teammate. And man, when you leave that room, talk about huh, feeling good. Like that's an attitude of gratitude. That's appreciating those on the journey with you. Okay, of course, here we go. I'm trying to be mindful of time. Come on, computer. Let's go next slide. I have a million things open here on this computer. Okay, so a couple last slides here. Creating buying and sharing the vision. Creating buying takes time and energy. Doc Riversism, it, it's sweat equity, sweating with those you lead, being in the mission with them, uh, shared experiences, consistency in your communication. And it requires ownership. Everyone that is on that journey needs to feel a part of it. And you have to create opportunities where they get to own a part of that vision. So you know, living the vision, acting on the mission, fighting for the culture. A great Maya Angelou quote, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And if they feel that culture and they feel you care, they're going to be bought in and they're going to fight for that vision. So how do you make an organization program team feel? Something that I've studied, you know, I think it was a Harvard study. You know, your, your energy as a human being is measurable and it can be felt, I think it's up to 10 feet away. So I always think about that with my classroom, with my team when I enter the locker room. They feel my energy. Whether they understand that or not, whether they can, they can actually put it into, our wor into words, they feel my energy as a leader. So I'm going to make sure that energy is positive. Energy cannot be, this is scientifically proven, energy cannot be destroyed. It can only change forms. So you have to be very mindful if you're having a bad day, if you're struggling. Again, leaders don't get the right to have the bad day. You need to really work on changing that energy so it's a force to positively lead. Um, and again, using your energy to impact those you lead. You cannot be an energy vampire. You cannot be someone who, that's a John Gordonism, sucks the life out of the room and takes away from those that you lead. J Jim Carrey had this great quote in a little YouTube video he did. You know, he said, you know, we are not the film. We are the light that shines through. So, you know, we're not physically that, that, that film real. The energy that we have shines through that film. It's real. It's authentic. And I think we need to be very mindful of that in our leadership. Okay, last two slides I'll leave you with. I know it was a 20-minute goal. I'm at about 22 minutes. But I want to say a couple things from me. Number one, I talked about earlier, my vision as a human being is, is this concept from a book I stole. Uh, the book is called Warrior of the Light by Paulo Coelho. And uh, it really got me thinking about this concept that I'm going to be someone who fights for what is right. And I, I think that for me and my leadership style and being authentic, I want people to know that. I want people to know that that matters to me. And I challenge all of you to, to, to kind of reflect on this very simple uh, thought. The definition of the word light, the, the noun is the natural agent that makes things visible. The verb is to make something start burning, igniting. The definition of dark is a noun. And the definition is the absence of light. I think so often in our world and in this crazy time with the pandemic and everything, I think a lot of people can, can get into the dark a little bit. But I think something we have to challenge ourselves as leaders to really reflect on is this. Darkness is not an entity. Darkness is not a real thing. Darkness is the absence of light. Think about how profound that is. When people are going through a hard time, when people are struggling, when people are doing things they're not supposed to be doing, if you think about it this way, you know, if they're in the dark, so to speak, that's not because they are dark, because dark is not a thing. They are just dealing with an absence of light. So as a leader, I feel compelled to be that light in every interaction that I can. And I challenge all of you as leaders to think about that. If, if this is at the core of who you are and this drives your why, the idea of making others better, of letting your light shine, your legacy will be that of, of a servant leader, someone who's impacted the world because you were here. Scientific fact, again, darkness cannot exist where there is light. So be light. I want the world to be better because I was here. That really drives me getting up in the morning. And, and finally, 
One other concept that I, I just feel compelled to share from a book called Chop Wood Carry Water by Joshua Medcalf. This profound quote that I just love because it's hard as a leader. And, and I just challenge you to think about this. The grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. We always hear, you know, the grass is green on the other side. We compare. We look at what other people are doing. We get jealous. As leaders, we get derailed. We see other people leading and things going well for them. And we think they got it all made in the shade and things are working out for them. And why not us? Well, guys, at the end of the day, the grass is not green on the other side. It's greener where you water it, where you invest, where you put your energy. Are you living the vision? Are you acting on the mission? Are you fighting for your culture? Again, be present, be where you are, and, and good things will happen. And again, comparison is the thief of joy. Stop comparing your leadership and what you're doing to what other people are doing. Focus on what you're doing. Keep your eyes on the prize. And those that you lead will be better because of it. Um, another great thing, Jim Carrey from that same video, our need for acceptance can make you invisible. Don't worry about that. Do what is right. Help others. Um, you know, again, from that book, uh, I mentioned earlier the obstacles, the way. Really, life is about three simple things, having the right perspective, acting on that, and having the will not to give up. And I think, you know, we don't need to worry about being accepted by other people. We need to do what is right, what we believe is right. Uh, real competition is against yourself that from the day before. Beat yesterday. And, and again, you know, sometimes you're not feeling where you're, you're getting where you want to go as a leader. Well, then maybe you need to re-articulate that vision a little bit, change your goals, or you need to work harder. And at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, as one door closes, another one will open if you're fighting the good fight. So I know I went a little over. I apologize for that. I hope I've given you some things to think about. If you ever want to reach out, I have a lot of this stuff defined and written up, and I can share that with you in terms of what we do with our program. Uh, again, my name is Nick Logalbo. Uh, my personal email is just Nick Logalbo, N-I-C-K-L-O-G-A-L-B-O at gmail.com. Um, thank you, and I hope this is helpful for, for all of you listening. And again, thanks to Jason for putting these together. Great stuff.